Okay, the server has now come up, and to connect to it, we open up a web browser and use this URL, substituting the IP address shown with your actual server IP. Now we'll log in with the default username and password of admin as the username and Cisco as the password. Password is all lowercase and the username will always be uppercase. So the first thing I recommend on a brand new installation is to change that admin password. To do that, go to the engineering menu and choose administrator management. Here, type in the old password, which is Cisco in all lowercase, then a new password of your choosing. Then click save. Okay, next thing to do is create the devices for QEAC to use for its call handling. For that, I'll go to the System Configuration menu, then choose System Device Management. In the Template Device section, click on Find Template Device. Next, search for the CTI template created earlier on CUCM. In my case, it was template underscore CTI, as shown here. Since it's selected, I'll go ahead and click Save. Now that the update is complete, I'll use the related link menu and go back to the previous screen. Next, I will configure a DN range for the CT gateway devices. These are used for queuing calls that have not yet been answered. It's recommended to have at least one per PSTN, plus a contingency for other incoming system calls. Next are service devices. These are used by the attendant console to hold, transfer, and camp on calls. The recommendation is four to six service queue devices per attendant console user. Next are park devices. These are used for attendants to park calls. It's recommended to have at least three call park devices per attendant console user. These are only required if call park is going to be used. Typical examples would be hospitals, factories, etc. where a PA system is prevalent. Once you have all your devices input, click on the Save button. Next, we'll synchronize with CUCM by clicking on the Synchronize with CUCM button. Here's a list of devices that QEAC will now configure on CUCM. To finish with the synchronization, go ahead and click the Synchronize with CUCM button again. Then we'll click OK on this pop-up. To check the status of the sync, you can click on the CUCM sync report icon here. As you can see in this window, it shows the progress of the device creation in real time. For now, I'll close this out and go into the queue creation. To create queues for incoming calls, you go to the user configuration menu and choose queue management. To create a queue, I'm going to click on add new. Give the queue a name that will make sense to the attendant. Next, we'll assign this queue a number. We'll leave the priority set at 99 for this queue. Input a salutation if needed. These are helpful if you want a particular greeting set every time an attendant answers the phone. You can check the forced delivery if you want the incoming calls to go directly to an attendant's headset. This is useful when using wireless headsets and attendants aren't sitting in front of the console to answer the calls. Next, input an emergency number. This is a predefined alternate destination that calls can go to in an event of emergency such as an early closure, fire alarm, etc. It could be another queue, voicemail, or night service. Next is the overflow number. An overflow occurs when the number of calls waiting exceeds the number of calls that are allowed to wait in a queue. If there is no operator logged into this selected queue, an incoming call will be immediately routed to the overflow number if the no operator overflow is checked. So we'll set the maximum calls at 2. Then we'll set the wait time overflow of 30 seconds. Next I'll put in a night service number. These are for calls made outside of the days and times specified for a work day. Those days and times can be configured on the General Properties page under the User Configuration menu. Now we have all our numbers set, I'll go ahead and click Save. Next I will create a queue for the external users to use that have similar settings to the internal queue. For the sake of time, I'll skip through that part. Okay, so I created the external queue. Now I will sync with CUCM once again. Next thing to configure are the operators that will be using a tenant console. 
To create operators, go to the User Configuration menu and choose Operator Management. On this page, we'll click Add New. All right, for login name, I'm just going to use Operator 1 and then put a password in. And I'll click Save. Next, I will assign this operator to the queues I created earlier by clicking on Queue Association. Now I'll go click the Find button to find those queues. Put a check mark beside each queue that you want to assign to the operator. Then click Save Selected Changes. Now go back to the previous page by clicking Go. And we'll save our changes by clicking Save. Okay, so as you can see, I created an operator 2 just like operator 1 and added them to the same queues. Next thing that needs to be configured is directory synchronization. This will populate the directory of the tenant console, pulling it from the communications manager. To set up synchronization, we're going to go to the system configuration menu, then choose directory synchronization. To start synchronization, we're going to check the box next to enable contact synchronization. Leave both boxes checked under auto synchronization. Under schedule settings, the minimum setting you can set is one hour. Now this is okay for department and business editions, but with the enterprise edition, it's recommended that you do a sync once daily, preferably after business hours due to the larger directory size. So I'm going to set it for daily, every one day, today's date, and then I'll set the time. I'll set the time a little bit in the future so it'll do a sync right away. And then I'll click Save. And that's it for the basic setup of the QX server to get it up and running. Next, I'll install the client. Alright, so I'm on a Windows 7 workstation and I have the client executable file located on my desktop. Now if you're installing it on a Windows 7 workstation, make sure you disable the user access control like you did on the server before you start the installation. So to get it started, I'll double click that exe file. Now we'll click on run. Now we'll click next. Put in your name. Now we'll click next. Click next again for the destination. Now we'll input the IP address of the attendant console server. Now we'll click next. I'm going to leave none for the default presence status, but if you did have a presence server located on your site, then you could choose that here. We'll go ahead and hit next. A default language of English. We're going to choose no for visually impaired. And then we're going to check the box to add an icon to the desktop and click next. Click next once more and it's going to install and it's complete very quickly we'll hit finish all right i'm going to start up ip communicator and let it register with communications manager all right my phone's registered now i can open up a tenant console all right now tenant console is open now i can log in by going to the file menu and clicking on login. And now I'll log in as operator one. Put in the password I set for operator one. And then my extension of my IP communicator. And click on login. I'm going to click OK on this pop up here, just letting me know that I need to register my system. As you can see, it's got a directory already. It pulled that from Communications Manager. So to test it out, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my other workstations I have and dial into one of these internal queues to watch it come into the console. And now you can see that it pops inside my attendant console. Now I can right click on it and choose to answer it. And then my salutation comes up because I configured one. And that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and close this out. Alright, so now I have a fully functional attendant console server up and running. And with that, this concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and always thanks for choosing Cisco.